Today's video is the first in a series of videos for educators and parents to help us understand what skills we may need to develop in children to help them uh, acquire mathematics in the academic setting or in school. And this is made in response to the many, many queries from parents about how your children have been sitting through the online classes for the last year and a half almost, but they've not really acquired skills and you find that they're lacking when it comes to application and understanding. So let's try and understand this. Unfortunately, in many schools, since teachers are also not very sure how to go about the online classes, many schools have resorted to assignments and projects that are sent back home. But as parents, you notice that the children are not really geared up to acquiring the skills through the projects as well. And many times you are completing the projects for them. So considering all of these challenges, we may need to understand what kind of support we can offer at home. Starting with this, the first concept that I always explore with parents is the simple statement that says, before I can hold something in my head, I must hold it in my hands. And this is true most often with mathematics. And if we do not allow this, we will realize that children are mechanically memorizing facts, trying to recall and recognize information instead of actually understanding and applying them. To further aid this process, we may need to have activities and play that inherently work on curiosity and exploration and lead to experiences that will move into application and understanding. At this point, in today's video, I'm going to talk about two processes that need to have uh, happen simultaneously. The first aspect of uh, developing the skills start with the language of math. Before I go into the manipulative aspects of mathematics which will lead to understanding and application, at the level of the brain I may need to understand the language associated with mathematics. So this starts with the concept of size and in this you may need to have big, small, far, near, uh, thick, thin, full, empty and so on. I'm sure you've taught them as opposites but they're not really opposites but quantities that the child can explore and convert into language. So for this you may need to have a lot of toys or you know everyday objects which the child can compare in terms of size and so on. The second is the concept of color. Now unfortunately in most schools color is taught as one entire concept you know and color naming is given as uh, the most important skill. However Color is a concept that's very, very complex at the level of the brain. And so I suggest that it's taught over a period of a whole year with a lot of activities. And this is how you can introduce color. The first thing that you need to understand as a parent or as an educator is that when you're introducing a particular color, give the child between one week and three weeks to be able to understand only that color. And this can be done with a lot of activities. Now, I'll give you a simple set of activities. Now, for example, I'm going to introduce the color pink. So what I will do is let the child know that this is pink. Okay. And I show them one object, which is pink, and give them a small basket and tell them wherever you find this color, different objects, collect it in your basket. So the child may go around, you know, find this clip somewhere, another bead similar match that. And then they find another, you know, object which is pink, you know, the lid from a, a bottle or they find a small post-it somewhere. And, you know, so the child continues to collect objects that are pink and they keep bringing it back to you at the end of a certain period of time and then you can sit with the child and say oh this is pink this looks like purple and then put it aside you know another color that may look like pink but that's red and you know you sort of play with the child but the only color that the child is collecting is pink so you're going to teach the concept of pink not pink so at the level of the brain this becomes very very important for categorization you'll do this for a period of one to three weeks depending on how long each child takes and then once they've mastered this color move on to the next color the next color should not be purple should not be red it should be something completely different it can be like black so at the level of the brain there's no confusion 
So as you keep introducing new colors, children can at the end of the week sit down and say, okay, this is pink, this is yellow, this is blue. And they're slowly beginning to sort out colors and it moves beyond just color naming with a deep understanding of what the concept is. The same steps are used for shapes. So the next area of language of math will be shapes. And in this you start with circle because that's the easiest for children to understand. And don't confuse it with round, with sphere and all that. Just each circle and let it be a shape which the child will be able to understand through biscuits, dosa and so on. So this is how you go about color and shape and this will be size, color, shape and don't take too many things simultaneously because it becomes a problem. So when you're doing color, work with color for a period of time and when the children are clear with at least five colors then move to shape because if you take red and suddenly say this is a red circle and children start getting confused. So do it one at a time. After this you move move to the numerals so being able to identify numbers being able to understand the signs and symbols that are used in mathematics like you know the plus the minus and so on the equal uh, this equals that those kind of symbols and the most important for the older children words like product and difference some these kind of words because otherwise what happens is they get confused when it comes to the operational aspect of mathematics what happens simultaneously when i said when i started out i said we need to work on two things one is the language of maths and something goes simultaneously which is maths as an experience or maths in the manipulative environment so when i say this this means that they need to start looking for shapes around them or you know when they're eating something this is a thick dosa and this is a thin paper roast and i'm sure all of you have eaten these or you can say this is a heavy book or this is a light paper. So for example, I could give the book and tell the child this is a very heavy book and this is a very light piece of paper. And so small things like this, children start comparing in their environment. The next is taking the same book, I can tell the child if they're slightly older, you can say open the book to 90 degrees. So the children understand that this is a right angle. Of course, you can get, uh, they can get to measure it with a protractor as well. This is 180 degrees and so on. So what happens, you can do this also at 45 degrees you can do this with the door so if you have a shelf like this and the door can open uh, to different uh, uh, you know different degrees you can get them to open it to different degrees and also measure with the protractor so depending on the age make sure that they're able to actually use mathematics at a physical manipulative level the next one that I normally teach is where you can give them a shape like this now this is a photo frame now you can get them to actually take a scale and measure and they'll understand that this particular uh, uh, frame is a um, uh, is a square so what formula will they use now the same thing they'll have to measure the book and in this they'll realize that this is a rectangle and so the formula that has to be used will be very different now the same thing you can apply it to um, physical spaces so you can say okay we're living in a rectangular room so let's measure this room or we live in a space which is a square so let's measure this and see how you can apply this this can be done with circumference this can be done with diameter so you get them to actually measure mathematics with their hands uh, the next one is of course to understand volume now for this i'm going to take a small uh, set of objects so as you can see i have three containers each one looks very very distinct so the first one is a small bowl the second is actually it used to be a candle holder now this one and the third one is a glass of water now if you actually look at it and you ask the child which container ho can hold the maximum amount of water or where which one has the maximum volume most children are likely to point out to this one because you know it has that illusion of being able to hold a lot more but when you get them to actually pour they'll notice that you know both objects actually hold the same amount of water and so then they start understanding the concept of volume and if you actually look at it this one also holds the same amount of water and if i were to uh, show them you know get them to pour i've made a small mess but basically 
uh, this one also holds the same amount of water and so on. So basically to understand the concept of volume, children can use objects. So you can uh, collect bottles that you buy uh, in stores, right? You have three bottles which contain 500 ml of some liquid. You can get children to see that the bottles are shaped differently, but they hold the same quantity or the same volume. They have the same volume. So to understand concept like volume, you could have experiments like this that the children can do hands on. Then you can work on numbers in their environment. So make them look at labels of uh, packets that you buy, you know, masalas or chips or something like that and help them to, you know, uh, measure those. And you can have small measuring jars where the children are able to actually uh, look at numbers in their environment. You know, this uh, product is 100 ml. Now the child is now going to be given another product. This is 50 ml. Okay, now when you look at it, it looks different. Now you can say, how many of these do I need to buy to be able to fill one container of this? So this is a small manipulative activity. And you know what you can do is once the bottles become empty, once the containers become empty, you can actually get them to measure it with liquids or with sand or with sawdust or whatever you have and help them understand how 50 ml becomes 100 ml and so on. The next is very simple fractions in their food. So one biscuit which is broken into two, you know, that is one by two and when it's divided into four, it's one by four and so on. These are very, very easy to do. Why is it important for us to do all of this? It's important, like I mentioned earlier, to be able to hold something in their hands before they can take it to the head because learning is not always about something going to the head. It's always about how I can use my hands to understand the concept of quantity of size of shape and so on because they will help acquire mathematics by stimulating different parts or different centers in the brain that will contribute towards the overall understanding of mathematics which can lead to problem solving and application over a period of time. Children who miss out this stage always have gaps in learning which you will keep seeing because they will start struggling with mathematics once they come to grade 6 when they will have to understand more complex abstract aspects of mathematics which may not always uh, be represented in concrete forms.